this. If you want them, take them. <laughs> try, try to get rid of everything. But oh, problems. really? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you're no, just totally trying to like fine. create space. Good morning, everyone. It is currently 6.44 a.m. Had a 6.30 alarm. Finally getting myself out of bed. Figured turn on the camera today and vlog and we'll just see where it goes. In my kitchen now, got to eat your multivitamins and then coffee. Getting fancy on you guys with the Starbucks here. But I actually got reusable K-cups now. So you just need to fill this up like 75, 80% with the coffee grounds. Um, so we just got like a little Tupperware. I'm gonna refill this up with the Starbucks coffee grounds that I just showed you guys. Definitely has been helping us save a little bit of money here. It's 7.37 now and finally made it down to my eBay workspace. I'm only gonna focus on getting five things done. I'm gonna put five things on my to-do list. So first thing is to pull and pack orders. Second thing to do is list items. For me, I'll get anywhere from like 15 to 20 up a day. The third thing on my to-do list, I'm actually meeting up with someone at 11 this morning for a potential buy. And I know I just did a recent huge bulk purchase, but I felt like this one today that I'm doing is at a small enough scale that I can just kind of add it onto it. And I don't think it'll cost me too much for the inventory that I'm getting. Of course, I'll bring my camera along and show you guys what I end up picking up if this deal goes through. Fourth thing is to photograph more items in the afternoon. And then the fifth thing, which I'm doing right now, is to edit a YouTube video. Everyone schedules their days a little differently and I'm not here to tell you the way I do it is the right answer. I'm just here to show you what I do and if you learn something from it, then that's super cool. I have 16 items going out today and my handling time is set at one business day. So I'm shipping out items Monday to Friday and I like to knock out shipping first because I feel like that is a no fail thing and if you're cutting it close to the pickup time or your post office closing, that could be a stressful thing, especially if something goes wrong in terms of like the eBay website being down or glitchy with creating shipping labels for you or if you just don't have the right size box or enough packing material for whatever reason. So I like to knock it out at the beginning of the day. So if something were to go wrong, like if I didn't have the right size box, which I try to do everything in my power to prevent a situation like that, but that gives me the rest of the day to do an emergency run for packing materials if I really needed to. And I'm gonna try to avoid spending like 15 minutes going through everything that's sold. So we'll just do like a quick rapid fire of everything that's going out today. A lot of bread and butter items, but you know, that's what ends up paying the bills. This was a thrift store find, this extra large polo. I picked this up because it had this cool palm tree coconut design on it. Paid about $6 for this at a thrift store store and is sold for $19.99 with the buyer paying shipping. We have this New York Islanders full zip hoodie. I took a best offer of $43 with the buyer paying shipping. This was a thrift store find. I paid $8.99 for this. This was an untucked shirt I found at a thrift store. I paid about $5.99 for this. This is a super old listing. I just wanted to get rid of it. I don't think the color was very desirable. It's like this orange salmon type of color. Um, but it was just been sitting in my store, so I took a best offer of $15 free shipping. This item here was a very good thrift store flip. I paid about six or seven dollars for this, and it sold for $64.99 plus shipping, and it sold overnight. This was a brown corduroy. The brand was Brooks Brothers, and I think the combination of Brooks Brothers, the brown corduroy, and then the wooden mushroom style of button. The combination of all those three is why I think this sold so quickly, um, but a really good sale here. Winter is coming. I have just under 12 bucks into these pair of Sorel boots. They sold, I was running a 30% off sale for anything that was sitting in my store for longer than six months. Um, so with that sale, this sold for $52.49 plus $14.99 for shipping. Next item going out is a woman's marmot rain jacket. This was a thrift store find. I have about $9 into this item and it's sold. I took a best offer of $26 and the buyer paid for shipping. This next item was thrown into a wholesale deal I made with Mr. Buys a lot. So I have about $16 into this and it's sold for $50.99 and the buyer paid for shipping on top. This next item was super interesting. I found a bunch of tennis dresses at a thrift store recently for about six to $7 a piece. And this one here, the brand is called Sophie Bella, sold for $35 and the buyer paid for shipping on top. 
And this sale here just shows that <laughs> I make a ton of mistakes and a bunch of bad buys. I picked this up like two years ago. This is an L.L. Bean plaid button-down shirt. I paid $5.99 for this at a thrift store and this sold. I took a best offer just to get rid of it. Um, I took a best offer of $13 free shipping, so pretty much just getting my money back here. We have just bread and butter sale here. This is an Oakley t-shirt. Just thought the design was super cool. I have about three to four bucks for this thrift store find and it sold for $19.99 with the buyer paying for shipping on top. Another bad buy. I thought this would do better, especially since this was a 2XL, which is a pretty good size. I thought this was going to be like another decent bread and butter, like a $20 t-shirt, but ended up taking a best offer of $11 just to get my money back and hopefully moving forward, make better purchases. Picked up these Under Armour Kiss Pants for about seven to eight bucks. I picked these up because they are new with tags and they had this cool hunting camo design on this, so I knew they'd sell. But this sold for $30.99 with the buyer paying for shipping on top. I thought this was a pretty cool Nike t-shirt. It has this nice Michael Jordan graphic on the front. I have about five, six bucks into this and it sold for $29.99 and the buyer paid for shipping on top. We have a video game MDK2 Armageddon for the PS2. I have about 50 cents into this and it sold for $7.99 and the buyer paid for shipping. And this last item going out is this Boston College Under Armour long sleeve shirt. Um, this was a multi-quantity listing, so quantity of two, you can see I sold one and I have one available. But the combination of Under Armour, Boston College being a fairly large school, and then me finding two of these, knowing that I do a multi-quantity listing, knew I'd make money off of this. I took a best offer of $21 and the buyer paid for shipping on this one. Nothing too crazy going out. A lot of bread and butter items. I think the two best sales were probably the Brooks Brothers corduroy jacket and then those Sorel boots. But those bread and butter items are really what's going to pay the bills. I've shared in my past couple of videos that I'm really trying to push my monthly gross sales to about 10,000. I'm sitting at like 6,800 right now. I feel like once I get to that 7 to 8K mark, that's going to be like a wall that I hit that I'm going to have to push through um, before I get to that 10K. I don't know how long that's going to take. And of course, those are gross numbers I'm talking about. Typically, when I take away all of my expenses like shipping labels, eBay fees, I promote my listings and cost of goods. But once I crunch those numbers and take all of those expenses away, usually around 45% of that gross number is my net profit. So just as like a general rule of thumb for me, of course, for your business, you're gonna have to crunch your numbers and see where you stand. But for me, about 45% of my gross profit is a good rough estimate. And whenever people talk about net profit, I always see comments asking about taxes, which doesn't really make a lot of sense for me because at like a normal job, when you're talking about salary or like hourly wage, that number that's being negotiated or that number that's being talked about is always pre-tax. Um, so if you're making like $25 an hour, that $25 an hour is pre-tax. Let's say for like a salary job, I was making like $120,000 a year. That $120,000 that's being talked about is pre-tax. So I estimate about like 25% of my net profit that will have to be paid in taxes. So I just set 25% every month off into a separate checking account just to be safe. Um, but the number that I'm talking about is net profit before taxes. So if you're curious, that's the number I'm talking about because in my previous jobs, whenever I was talking about salary, that salary number was always pre-tax as well. So it just makes like logical sense to talk about the amount of money you're making pre-tax. And then obviously it goes without saying that everyone's paying taxes. I'm gonna go ahead and pull today's orders, get those packed and shipped out ready to go. So I'll see you back here in a bit after I do all of that. Start it up. So just pull all of my orders, just need to grab one more thing. There's actually two more items that I need to grab that weren't up on those two shelves up here. So I have this closet here behind me. Um, so I keep all of my heavier jackets here and I also store video games back here. So you can see all of the heavier jackets that I just don't want to fold up, I store in here. So I have two quarter jackets, I just want to make sure I grab the right one. Um, this one has the elbow patches, so I know it's not this one. Um, this one, I just need to double check, it's Brooks Brothers. I got a 42R, so this is the right jacket, so I'm just going to grab this. Alright, so I'm just going to hang it up here for now. 
And then the last item is that video game. So it's in the A, B bin right here. And then I just need to search for the right game. So MDK2, this is our game right here. Just finished packing up all of my items, just placed them here on this table. I just created this fun little stack for Instagram. It was like a little balancing act. I'm sure if I just like touch it, it'll tip over. Maybe not, that's pretty solid. But if you're not following me on Instagram, uh, follow me at Lot of Josh. I just post like random things, like things I'm selling, things I'm finding. So follow me over there if you're not already. And of course, as soon as I turn off the camera and walk away, that little stack over there fell over. Um, but it's all clothing, so nothing to worry about over there. Like I told you guys earlier, I am meeting up with someone at 11 for a potential buyout. So I'll probably list until like a little before 1030 and then get ready to head out. I already have a bank of photos ready to go for listing, but before we get into it, I do want to share something that's been helping me in terms of my overall productivity. It's just been helping me stay focused. The idea is to use a timer, pick a task, set a timer for 25 minutes with zero interruptions. Those 25 minutes is completely dedicated to that one task that you chose. And then you take a five minute break and then you rinse and repeat a couple of times. The whole idea is called Pomodoro. Just having that timer there to keep me on task has helped me with my overall productivity. Just finished listing for the morning, so the plan for the next couple of hours. 11 o'clock, I have to meet up with this guy for a potential buyout. He reached out to me on Instagram, said he was looking to just sell off his entire eBay store. Um, sent me a couple of pictures and looked like he had some really good stuff. And he said um, he was looking to just like offload it quickly and just sell it all for cheap. Um, so hopefully that deal goes through. If it does, I'll do like an overview of the haul. Um, need to drop off my packages at the post office. Um, and then it'll probably be around lunchtime, so I'm gonna eat lunch with the wife, and then we'll see where the afternoon goes from there. Did you go far from here? Um, it's like 10, 15 minutes. Okay, nice. Yeah, how's the drive for you? Not bad. We're bridge moving fine. It was like a 20 minute drive. Okay, nice. Yeah, without traffic, it's like 20 minutes it's not easily. Bad. Yeah. I'm assuming this box is like mostly what you had listed. Uh, yes. Yeah, I never listed those the Mickey and Minnie thing. Mm -hmm. um, those would be good, like obviously. Just right. Yeah. The Hoka's I never listed surprisingly. I just never. Oh really? Cut around. Yeah, that would have sold for you Hoka. like within a week. I, I know. I know. <laughs> I wanted to clean them, and then it just like right the yeah. Thing, decided to just stop doing things. Yeah. Like electronics for me all the time. Oh, I know. Like Sorry. it's just stacks up. I'm like I'll just test it when I have enough things to it's test so and then VCR, even like consoles I'll kind of hang on to for a little bit. Yeah. Those will sell you like These are in really good condition too. There's some peeling on the heel. Yeah, they're just a little dirty, but they're not bad. But yeah. You'd be surprised, like Hoka is in the worst condition, they'll still sell. Yeah, right? I know. Yeah. People just use them as like walking or like work shoes. Pretty cool piece. Is a sweater? Yeah, it's an old. Uh, I got that at like a thrift shop. Yeah, made in the it's USA. Not crazy old. I think it's like probably at least twenty years old now. Yeah, you weren't sure on what you wanted. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I was thinking like two to three hundred, maybe. If that's too much, let me know. I'd be happy to. Yeah. Do something. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not trying to get my money back. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're just trying to move. Yeah, I just needed it. More just getting it out of my storage unit. Okay. Um, you said two to three hundred? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Just two thirty? Yeah. You sure? Totally fine, man. Don't worry about it. Okay. Obviously the crates, you want those? Boxes? Uh, no, I have boxes and... Yeah, you can, you can hold on to those. 
If you want them, take them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of everything. But oh, bumps. really? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah if no, you're just trying to like fine. create space, yeah. then... I have uh, yeah. a lot of my other gear and stuff. and I have a video production company is what I do. So okay. Like, yeah, yeah. I, full of gear. That's I'm what I assume with the Instagram name. Now it's like both stuff. Yeah. So I'm trying to free up space. Okay, cool. Help no, I think for 230, it's uh, as long as you're, you're, good with you're team, like I'm giving totally it to me, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's okay, fine. cool. Um, yeah, no, I'm happy with that. Yeah, make some money, please. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah, okay, cool. We just got back from the post office, and that bulk purchase I just made was an incredible deal. All of this is, I'm assuming it was just stuff that he had listed in his store that he already like inventoried and photographed and everything. Um, so already bagged, I'm gonna have to re-photograph everything and then see what types of items, like this is like a vintage uh, football Redskins sweater. But there's 44 items of clothing here. We have these four pairs of shoes. So we have two pairs of Hoka One Ones. Um, this one I thought was another pair of Hoka's when I uh, first saw it. I never heard of this brand. Um, G Defi. I don't. I don't know if I'm butchering the the brand name, but looks like a quality pair in really good condition. Um, but yeah, like these Hoka's. Um, I'll look up the model number, but I've sold these anywhere from like 40 to 80 bucks. Uh, we'll say 40 to be on the conservative side, but like this one, pretty good condition. Um, this looks like a woman's pair, and this one looks like a men's pair. And then we have this pair of Rockport um loafers i don't know how much this is gonna sell maybe like 15 20 i'll do some research on the shoes i haven't comped out anything yet but just based off of the brands i know this was a good deal in total i would estimate probably around like 75 items so around 75 items for a 230 dollar buy cost that comes out to about three dollars per item which is an amazing deal especially for a bulk purchase like this so on top of the clothing so i put all of the clothing here i just wanted to count up how much clothing pieces i had uh, we have the shoes and then we have this tote here so we have i think these are just like lacrosse pads um yeah so these are arm guards we have a bunch of harry potter books so i have a bunch of harry potter books in storage so i'll see if any of these books here complete a set and then i'll just list that entire set um, and then a bunch of miscellaneous items. This is a mini waffle maker. We have like a little um, stitch hat, DVDs. Um, I saw these, these are Apple TVs. So I think there's two, there's one here and then one there. He said both of them were working. Um, this is just a, a Vineyard Vines necktie. Another DVD, we got two Funko. I don't even know what this is. These are Funko vs. Strategy Games, Game of Thrones. So we got two of those here. We have this little um, handheld game. And then we have these two right here, uh, Mickey and Minnie. So I'll sell these as a lot, but this is like timely for um, Christmas. And then this little tote here. Um, I know I saw this Starbucks mug earlier. Like I said, I haven't looked up all of these items yet, but total cost for everything was $230. So I'll definitely be making money here. Uh, we have like blank media, some Dymo labels. It's like miscellaneous stuff. Um, haven't opened up these mugs yet, but we got a couple of mugs. So we'll see what's in there. We got a camera in here. I didn't even notice um, that this was in here. This is a Fuji camera. I'll have to look up this model specifically, but I've sold cameras like this in the past. Um, so we'll see if this works. And then we have, I'm not sure what this is. Sharp Image Designer Sound Tutor. Um, so yes. I mean, seriously an awesome deal for what I got and what I paid for it. So I just couldn't pass this deal up, but Given that I made that huge bulk purchase a couple of weeks back and then this purchase here, um, I'll probably have to limit my thrift store shopping. If I do go thrifting, it'll just be like purely for fun. Like I'll only have to pick up items that I can sell for like $40, $50 plus at the thrift store. Um, so I'll have to be like super picky for sure. Um, but I have a lot of work ahead. I'm still, it'll take me a couple of months to get through that previous bulk purchase. And then I have all of this stuff now as well. In terms of YouTube, I definitely need to find 
some kind of balance in terms of reselling on YouTube. It really, if you want to do YouTube properly, like you really have to commit full-time hours. And I just feel like my eBay business is not at a point where I can just like pump out videos consistently. Even like talking to the camera for little tidbits like this, I'll end up recording the same idea, um, the same lines like four or five times. And then I'll just put the best take into the footage, you know, while I'm editing the video. Um, so that takes up a lot of time. You know, maybe I'm just not doing it consistently enough where I can just turn on the camera, you know, spit out ideas and put together um, the footage for a video for all of you. Um, but that's something that I'm working on. That's something I'm trying to think through in terms of how to balance reselling and YouTube because right now, um, reselling is definitely what's paying for the bills. Like reselling is my main focus right now and then YouTube is like the side hustle to my full-time job which is reselling now. Um, so still trying to figure that piece out. So I think I'm gonna dedicate the rest of the afternoon out until dinner for YouTube. So editing the footage and then really trying to think through a solid game plan for my YouTube side of things. Uh, because I, I definitely still wanna do YouTube, it's just hard to balance the time because YouTube is very time consuming, at least for me it is. And um, I just feel like my reselling business isn't at a place where I can um, really take away a lot of time. Like today, I'm gonna be taking away an entire afternoon to YouTube. So I'm gonna try to think through ways to be, to be more efficient maybe, um, to be more efficient and have a good plan moving forward between reselling and YouTube. But I'm gonna cut off that little ramble about YouTube and reselling there. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know down in the comment section below what you wanna see in terms of behind the scenes for my business. But other than that, check out all of the affiliate links down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Start it up.